cop pulls over black man in a luxury car and arrests him. What happens next is unbelievable. Before we embark on this captivating journey, we kindly invite you to show your support by engaging with our content. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a thoughtful comment stating, I've subscribed. Additionally, if you find this story as inspiring as we do, don't forget to share it with your loved ones. Your support means the world to us. Dawn barely peeked over the horizon when Mark Weston bolted upright in bed. A potent cocktail of nervous energy and raw excitement buzzed through him. Today marked his first official shift as a police officer, a dream he'd cherished for years. As he pulled on his crisp uniform, a surge of pride and duty washed over him. Images of making a positive impact, of upholding the law with unwavering integrity, flickered through his mind. The station bustled with activity as Mark arrived. There, greeting him with a firm handshake, stood Officer Lucas Harding, a seasoned cop with a staggering 26 years under his belt. Weston morning, Lucas boomed, his voice gruff but friendly. Gung-ho for your first patrol? Mark, trying to tamp down his jitters, managed a yes, sir, eager to learn from the best. Lucas flashed a smile. Good attitude, rookie. Stick close and you'll be all right. Climbing into the patrol car, Mark shadowed Lucas's every move as they cruised the city streets. The veteran officer exuded an aura of quiet confidence, his gaze constantly sweeping the surroundings with a keen eye. Then, in a flash, Lucas's focus locked onto a sleek black sports car that zipped past them, occupied by three young men, one of them a black man named James. Lucas grunted, his gaze lingering on the car. Fancy ride, he muttered, a low rumble in his chest. Looks a little out of place around here, wouldn't you say, Weston? Mark swallowed, unsure. Lucas's tone prickled at him, but he remained silent. He watched as Lucas flipped on his siren, signaling for the car to pull over. As they approached the stopped vehicle, Lucas's demeanor shifted. His expression turned professional, but Mark noticed a flicker of something else in his eyes. Suspicion. Inside the car, James felt a familiar dread bloom in his gut. He'd been pulled over by the police before, and it was rarely a positive interaction. He forced himself to breathe deeply, vowing to be polite and cooperative. Leaning into the car, Lucas greeted the driver, James, with a curt nod. Afternoon, sir. Do you know why I pulled you over? James, trying to project calmness, responded. No, officer. Is there a problem? Lucas's gaze darted towards James's friends, then back to him. That's a nice car you got there, he said, his voice clipped. What line of work are you in? I own a few businesses, James explained, hoping his answer would suffice. I live in the neighborhood. Lucas's eyes narrowed. Businesses, huh? What kind? A tech store chain, James replied, hoping this would dispel any doubts. The air crackled with tension. Lucas remained silent for a beat, his stare lingering on James and his companions. Back in the patrol car, Mark watched the scene unfold, a knot of unease tightening in his stomach. This whole thing felt wrong to him, but he couldn't pinpoint why. Lucas's voice hardened. All right, everyone out of the car. James and his friends shared a look of bewildered apprehension, but they exited the vehicle without resistance. As they clustered on the roadside, Lucas started a search of the car. Watching from the patrol car, Mark's unease morphed into stark horror. He saw, in a sickening flash of movement, Lucas palm something small from his pocket and shove it discreetly into the car's interior. The awful truth crystallized in Mark's mind. Lucas was planting evidence. Hold on a minute. James's voice broke the silence, sharp with protest. We haven't done anything wrong. Lucas ignored him, straightening up with a theatrical flourish. In his hand, he brandished a small plastic bag filled with what looked suspiciously like narcotics. Well, 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 he said, his voice dripping with manufactured righteousness. What seems to be this then? Care to explain? James's eyes bulged in disbelief. That's not mine. I swear I don't know anything about that. Lucas merely shook his head, a smug smile playing on his lips. You're under arrest for possession of illegal substances, he declared, slapping handcuffs on James's wrists. Mark's conscience roared. He couldn't be a party to this blatant corruption. In a surge of defiance, he whipped out his phone and with a covert flick of his thumb, started recording the entire scene. 
The ride back to the station was a tense, suffocating affair. The weight of Mark's decision pressed down on him, but he knew he had to act. He couldn't let this fabricated crime stand. The sterile lights of the police station buzzed overhead as Lucas processed James and his shaken friends. Mark felt a churning in his gut. He couldn't be complicit in this injustice any longer. With a determined stride, he pocketed his phone and made a beeline for the captain's office. Reaching the door, he took a fortifying breath and knocked sharply. Come in! A gruff voice boomed from within. Mark entered, his gaze locking with the captain's. Captain, I need to report something serious. The captain, a seasoned officer with a weathered face, leaned back in his chair, his gaze sharpening. Officer Weston, what troubles you? Mark didn't hesitate. I have evidence of misconduct by Sergeant Harding. He held up his phone, the screen displaying the incriminating video. He planted evidence during the traffic stop. The captain's jaw clenched as his eyes devoured the video frame by frame. With each passing second, his expression darkened with a righteous anger. When the video ended, he looked up at Mark, eyes blazing. Thank you for bringing this to my attention, Officer Weston. Stay here. The captain marched out, his presence radiating authority. In the main holding area, James and his friends huddled together, anxiety etched on their faces. As the captain approached, James looked up, a flicker of hope igniting in his eyes. James, the captain boomed, his voice filled with sincerity. I owe you a profound apology. An immediate investigation will be launched into Sergeant Harding's actions. What you experienced falls far short of the standards we uphold. Relief washed over James, though a tremor of fear still lingered. Thank you, Captain. And thank you, Officer Weston, for being the voice of reason. The captain's gaze then turned steely as he addressed the entire room, his voice echoing. Sergeant Harding, front and center. Lucas strutted forward, a smug smirk plastered on his face. But as he met the captain's icy stare, the smirk faltered. Sergeant Harding, the captain's voice cut through the air. Turn in your badge and service weapon. You stand accused of planting evidence and racial profiling. You are a disgrace to this department. You will not serve among these fine officers any longer. Lucas's complexion drained of color as he relinquished his badge and firearm, rendered speechless by the incontrovertible proof. James, determined to seek redress for the harm inflicted upon himself and his companions, initiated a personal lawsuit against Lucas. Yet, he refrained from taking legal action against the police force, in recognition of the commendable conduct displayed by Mark and the precinct's captain. In the wake of these events, the police department underwent an exhaustive evaluation of its operational protocols, underscoring the imperative of responsibility and systemic change. The commendable deeds of Mark garnered widespread acclaim, securing him esteem and high regard among his peers and the broader community. This narrative underscores the significance of moral fortitude, valor, and the resolve to confront wrongdoing. The valiant disclosure of Sergeant Lucas's malpractices by Officer Mark Weston accentuates the pivotal role that individuals assume in maintaining justice and fostering transparency within institutions. It further highlights the pernicious impact of racial bias and the pressing necessity for progressive transformation within the realm of policing. Mark's stance not only safeguarded the innocent, but also played a crucial part in mending the public's confidence in law enforcement. This account stands as a potent testament to the impact of pursuing the virtuous path, irrespective of its challenges and its capacity to affect meaningful change. I invite you to ponder and share your insights on ways to cultivate greater ethical conduct and accountability in our societies and establishments. Please, feel free to contribute your thoughts below.